Before we create this incredible vegan chicken pot pie packed full of perfectly cooked veggies, a crispy, flaky homemade crust, we've got to make the star of the show, the chicken seitan, which is going to soak up all the flavor we pack in this thing. So let's go get it. In order to do this right, we've got to nail the chicken. So we'll be turning to my favorite shredded vegan chicken recipe. Now with every seitan recipe, we need to make our wet and our dry. So grab a bowl and pop in 145 grams of vital wheat gluten and 50 grams of instant potato flakes. Then on to our wet ingredients. Remember y'all, it is really important to weigh out your wet ingredients when you're making seitan. With that said, let's go ahead and make it. Measure out 145 grams of veggie stock and then add a half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of MSG, one teaspoon poultry seasoning, two teaspoons onion powder, one teaspoon garlic powder, two tablespoons of vinegar, and whisk, whisk, whisk that on up. Pour in the wet to the dry and let's get to work. I can feel feel the dough tightening up as I'm combining, so I've got to act quick. If you've made seitan before, you're going to think this is too dry, but it's not. So let's roll this out to lengthen and form it into a log about eight to 10 inches long and stretch this out as much as we can without it tearing. Okay, now see that? Those are the individual strands of gluten. That is the good texture. So cut the dough lengthwise, leaving it attached at the top. So cut one, cut two, now he's got three little legs. How cute. We will name him Frankie. Aww. Now we've got to braid Frankie to eke out even better texture. This will give it a better bite and chew at the end. So take a strand, crisscross one under the other. You can stretch out the strands to gain length so you can get more braids too. When you run out of slack, you can tuck the end into the other knot. Now let's give it one more stretch. Now once it looks like a long, healthy brown, uh... Wrap Frank up with some foil. I like to use heavy duty foil, ha ha ha. And then let's do a Tootsie Roll here. It doesn't need to be crazy tight, but we want to make sure it stays compact. Pinch and roll the ends, then we're ready to pressure cook. By the way, if you want to make this without a pressure cooker, see the video link in the description that has a full video dedicated to this specific recipe and different ways you can make it. Now grab your Instant Pot insert, put in the steamer basket, is that what we're calling this thing? And then about a cup of water, make sure the water is below the insert and not touching the wrapped chicken and then to the pot make sure the steam release is closed and then pressure cook this on high for one and a half hours now while that cooks we're on to the pie dough seriously this is so easy it comes together in five minutes once you got your mise on grab your food processor and pour in 275 grams of all-purpose flour 115 grams of frozen veggie shortening it should be rock solid i weighed this out and put it in my freezer yesterday so it would be rock solid today now add 15 grams or one tablespoon of sugar, seven grams of one teaspoon of salt, and then let's give it a two second pulse for about one, two, uh, three times. Here's what it looks like from the top. If it looks like breadcrumbs, you're good to go. That's how you know your ingredients were cold enough. Now add 70 grams or six tablespoons of ice water, and then we pulse again. For let's see, two to four seconds each time, maybe 20 seconds total. Don't worry, this will actually make a dough, I swear. And now off to the mat. Bam! Well, that didn't look that cool. Now pour out your mix. What we're gonna do here is compress it, not knead it. So sop up those extra pieces and then wrap it in some plastic wrap. Press it down again here. Now pop that in the fridge for about an hour while we make the filling. Now we're essentially gonna make the gravy that is tight and stewy in consistency. So add a fourth cup of vegan butter, let that melt. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Love those little pops. Now fry up your onion. Now once this starts to change color like this, add your garlic, your carrots, and celery. And then once the butter is soaked up, we're gonna get fancy with some sweet vermouth. Add a half cup here and let's deglaze the pan. And once the boo smell goes away and it has reduced quite a bit, add a fourth cup of all-purpose flour. Cook that until it is all clumped up. Then let's add some stock, about four cups. Then it's time for the chicken, which finished a little bit ago and has cooled down. We're gonna tear this whole thing up into the pan. You can see it has a really nice grain. Just get your thumbs in there and pull it apart from the center. You wanna make sure they are bite sized. All right, I'm probably gonna speed this part up so you can see the whole thing. Fast forward. All right, now we're done with all the chicken and assembling. Slap about a tablespoon of fresh thyme in there. Stir that in. Let's add some more stock while we're at it. This is looking a little thin. I did about another half cup-ish. Now this is really
really where you get to be the master of your own domain. If you prefer a soupy final product, add more. If you want it on the tighter side, like me, keep it like this. Add a half cup of frozen peas, taste for seasoning, and look how nice this is. The chicken is already soaking up some of that flavor. Let's set this aside and roll out our pie crust and bake this baby. Bam! Finally, there we go. Grab your rusted dough from the fridge, flour your surface, unwrap, and we are ready to roll, ha ha. I finally got a rolling pin after years of using random bottles around the house. There's no fancy technique here, just roll it in different directions here to get the best circle you can. If it sticks or tears, just patch it back up. And if you get stuck, use a scraper to loosen the bottom. My pan was about 13 inches measuring from a lip to lip of the pan. So we'll do about 14 so we have a little extra slack to crimp the side. Now roll this up on the pan and let's put this puppy on. All right, this has already thickened up quite a bit. Look at that. You can add more water here if you like. And now we roll this on. Got a little tear there. We'll patch that up in a bit here. Smooth this out and then tear off excess dough. Then you can use that to patch up after you make the bake. You won't notice, I promise about that. Just press your fork on the sides to get that classic homemade pie look. It looks rustic, but I prefer that. Cut a sizable X. You don't want the steam bubbling the pie crust up. Maybe about four inches long on each side and then poke holes around the circumference. Now to get a nice golden brown look, we're going to apply some vegan egg wash. So mix two parts unsweetened soy milk and one part maple syrup. Mix it up. We are not gonna use the whole thing here. If you put too much on, it will puddle up and the crust won't cook in that area. Less is more and you can drink up any leftovers. Yum. Crack on some pepper and then sprinkle on some flaky salt and it's time to bake. Put on the middle rack at 400 F, 205 C for 30 minutes. Remember, we're just cooking the crust. The filling is already done. So once it looks good to you, we're donezo. Let it rest for about 10 minutes so your friends and family don't burn their mouths, because trust me, they will. Cut in, loosen up the crust, and serve. Let's give this a taste. The crust is flaky and crispy on the top, but the filling fuses with the bottom, which is nice. The chicken is tender and has great texture. I hope you consider making this for your friends and family. And until next time, y'all, be nice to each other and keep cooking.